So good morning again, everyone. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, if throughout the presentation you have a question about Google Classroom, please share it in that chat feature. As it was showing before this, you want to make sure to uh, click on the upper right side. It's an icon that looks like a comment from Google Docs. If you could click on that, that would open the chat feature. And then you can go ahead and type out your question. Okay, so as mentioned in uh, the email that was sent out yesterday, we're just going to go over a few uh, tips, kind of like a refresher uh, for those of us who need it uh, or want some reinforcement during these times. Uh, so as you can see, we have our Google Classroom displaying here. Uh, if you still have a few students, I know some of you are joining in because you just started a Google Classroom. So students can join two ways. One is if they go to Google Classroom, they would click join and they would type in the code that is there. Obviously not this specific code, but the code that is displayed in your Google Classroom in that, in that section. Another way to invite your students if you just started one, as you can see, there are four tabs here at the top. You want to click the people tab. And then here in students, you click that little share, the profile. Click on that and then you can type out their names or their emails and they will get an invitation via their email. Now, secondary teachers, you do have an option uh, to start a Google Classroom via Aries and we can share that at the end since that does not pertain to everyone uh, who is joining us here at the moment. Okay. So going back to these tabs, the very first tab you see is the stream tab. Here is where you can post announcements uh, and such for your classroom. So if you want to do that, you can see here at the top, you should see in your Google Classroom, either your face or your icon, and then share something with your class. So you would click there and you would type out a message or an announcement that you want your students to see. I know some of you started a Google Classroom for your little ones, uh, for your younger students, like K1, 2. So in this case, it will probably be the parents accessing this. So this is where you could also type a message for your parents. Now, for those who teach multiple classes, here at the top, you see four, and you see uh, that it has a little drop down. You would click, click that there. So if you're managing more than one Google Classroom, you can select all the Google Classrooms you want to receive this message. In this case, I just want one classroom to receive this message. And for differentiating purposes, you can also select which students to receive this. So in this drop down menu here, the default is all students. But if I only want a few students to get this, I will uncheck the other students. And only the ones with the check mark will receive this message. I can also add attachments to this announcement. Here at the bottom, I have a paper clip and the word add. I would click on that. I can add something from the drive, a link to an outside source or website. I can upload a file from my computer or add something from YouTube. In this case, I probably want to link them. Before, so here I can type it. So maybe if I want to direct them to Newzella, type, type out the link or copy and paste it click add link and it would add it there. Students would then see it on, on their end and they would click on it to access it. To add something to the drive, same idea. Click on Google Drive. Your more recent files will be the one to appear. If it's something you didn't access recently, just click over to my drive. And you can, can select another file. So on and so forth. When you're ready, you can just click post. Okay, so just double checking if everyone can see it now. So as you can see, the stream has now been updated. It'll let the students know that at 912, I posted this message for them. Now, let's say you are, are sharing a Google Classroom with multiple teachers. I know some school sites 
uh, departments or grade levels all have one general Google Classroom in which every teacher is a teacher and everyone just posts resources that others can just pull and use. So let's say one of your colleagues made a good announcement on there, on that specific classroom that you share, you want to reuse that announcement. In that same section, you want to click these arrows here, the reuse post. When you click that, it'll show you the different announcements that have been made. You can select the one you want by clicking on it. It'll highlight it in that light gray. Then you click this reuse button at the lower right side. And as you can see, it will pop up there for me. And here I can make any changes as necessary. So again, I can select whether I want all or some of my classes to receive this and whether I want all or some of my students uh, to receive this as well. I can add more resources by clicking add. And when I'm ready, I can click post. Did I miss anything on announcements, Kathleen? Uh, no, I think it was good. Just make sure that you have the, uh, when that reusing a post, if you created a post that had a lot of resources, make sure at the bottom there that you create new copies of all attachments so that you don't have to reattach them from your drive. Excellent. All right, so please remember if you have questions to put them in that chat so that we can address them as we go. This is where you want to add any assignments or quizzes for your students. As you can see, this classroom has been quite active and we've been using topics to organize everything that we've been posting for our colleagues in technology services who have been uh, very wonderful about participating in our Google Classroom. Okay. So to create an assignment, you want to go here in this upper left-hand side, create button. Yours may not be purple, depending on what color scheme your Google Classroom is. So if yours is in purple, don't worry about it. It's still the same button. Okay. So you click Create, and here you have your choices. So first, we're going to show you how to post a question. Um, because if you just started a Google Classroom, a question is a good way to uh, get students started in using Google Classroom and getting used to it. So we're going to go ahead and click Question. So what's great is that if you haven't used it since it got updated, these little pop-ups appear to guide you through it, okay? Here I have the option to ask a short answer question or a multiple choice question. So first we're gonna show short answer. So where it says question, we wanna type out our question. We're just gonna keep it simple. How are you feeling today? Here you can also add a sentence frame for your ELs um, or any other students who might need it. And just like with announcements, you can add something from your drive, a link, a file from your computer or a YouTube video if you like, but you do not have to. Another option here that we didn't see in the announcements is create. So since this question is considered an assignment, students have that option to click that create button as well and create something uh, immediately and you as well, if you don't have something in your drive and you just wanna create something real quickly, you can create it through this way. But we're gonna go ahead and just leave it simple. Okay. Here on the right-hand side, you can determine which classes get this question as well as which students. The default will always be the classroom you are currently in and all of the students. You can then determine the amount of points students will get. For now, we're gonna make this ungraded, especially if it's students first time using Google Classroom. Uh, you wanna make sure not to add that added pressure of getting points. You can also add a due date. So I'm gonna get today is the 17th. It'll be due tomorrow. And the topic here 
Uh, we really like this topic, this topic section, because it really helps you organize. As you saw scrolling through the Google Classroom, uh, you were able to see the different topics we had. So this really helps with organization. So for those of you who use Google Cl Classroom frequently or as you start using it more frequently, those topics really help with the organization for your students, parents, if it's a younger students and they're the ones um, accessing Google Classroom. So these are the topics that we currently have. If you want to add it to one topic, you would click here, topic, and then you can type out your topic title. So maybe we'll call this morning check-in. I think your screen froze, Sandra. Option, you can allow students to reply to each other, which will then start a thread under your question. If you don't want that, if you just want it to be between you and the student, you can uncheck that. And then this option here allows students to go back and edit their answer. Okay. Hey, Sandra. So when you're ready. Yes. Just go ahead and finish that and then I've got a few questions you want to address. Excellent. All right, here we go. Okay, so let me see. Where does the first question start? So, um, uh, Mr. Connor, how do you, Mr. Connor, you asked how do you search previous lessons to find a specific lesson? Eh, there's really no way to search to find a lesson that you're reposting. You just, you just kind of have to know that it exists in a specific classroom. Um, you know, if, if, if you're here, this is one classroom, but if you know it's in a, so that's the specific classroom. And if you use the back arrow, up there, you can see all your classrooms. So I know what a lot of uh, classrooms, uh, I'm sorry, teachers or departments or grade levels do is they have a department Google Classroom where they throw all their grade assignments and then everybody just pulls from there. Um, a lot of people just work off of their first period is where they post uh, the initial assignment and then they share to all their other ones. Um, so that's really the only way to, to search um, because they, they haven't got that to that level at Google yet, but I am sure that it is something that um, can definitely happen in the future. And we can even show you where to put, put a um, feedback down there in the corner there. If you click on that, you can actually request a feature from Google. So if that's something you want to request a feature for reusing a post, you can just type it up and send it to Google because they want to know what teachers like to use. Okay. Um, so the other questions, Richard asked about how do you attach? Richard, what are you looking to attach? You can un we can unmute you and you can respond. Richard. Yeah, she. You said that she can attach files when you create an assignment. Yeah. How do you do that? So, if you wanted to attach a, uh, an, if you're on an assignment, is the resource that you want to attach a file? Is it in your Google Drive? Yes. Okay. So Sandra's gonna just click on that Add button and just click Google Drive and find it. Got it. Then you okay. can attach it. So if it is something, if it is a Google Doc that you actually, if you're making it an assignment for students, you want them to say fill out a Google Doc. Let's say you um, had a thinking map or a, um, a the type of Google Doc that you had fit, created and you wanted students to type into it. When you're making an assignment, you want to make sure that you make a make it uh, every student gets a copy. And we'll show that shortly after we address all these other questions as well. Got it. All right. Thank you. Great question. You're very welcome. Uh, so then what will parents see if you use the invite guardian? So we haven't gotten to that either. Uh, should we address that now, Kathleen? Since no, I can here. tell them in here that uh, I'm taking notes. And if we don't cover it, we'll, we're going to have an open forum at the end as well. OK, so the inviting guardians, I won't address it all the way. Uh, but just so you know, when you invite the guardians, they will not have access to your Google Classroom. Due to privacy uh, reasons, you know, students are underage, um, you can't just give that access. That and Google Classrooms created through MyLUSD are closed only to MyLUSD accounts. So they will not see what you are putting in Google Classrooms. They will just see, as it's described, a summary 
a summary of what have you have posted. So we'll go over that with more detail as well. And just along those same lines, some of you um, have set up new classrooms this for this online experience that we're all having, remote learning experience we're having. And just know that um, your parent, you can't just send the parents the Google Classroom join code. You actually, this, they have to log in as the student and then enter that code. They can't enter as themselves. Because again, this is that safe closed environment that Sandra just mentioned. So Maria Aceves, I see your question about the make a copy for each student. We'll address it right now when we show how to do an assignment. And yes, Mr. Henderson, um, students can access Google Classroom on PS4s and Xbox Ones. They're not very happy to know that teachers have found that out, but they are able to access Google Classroom on their browsers through PS4 and Xbox One. All right, so let's continue. And then we'll ask some more questions. Uh, we'll address some new questions as we go. Okay, so we showed the question type, and that's what students will see. Um, they'll be able to it looks a little different on the student side. They'll actually have a section, not a common area here, but they'll have a section where they can input the answer. Since uh, we unchecked uh, not to allow students to reply to each other, only you as a teacher or any other co-teacher in the Google Classroom will be able to see the answer. So it'll be, a, it's private between you and the student. So now to show how to create an assignment, that same create button. So instead of question, we want to click assignment. So again, if this is something you have not used in a while or it's your first time, we'll get this pop up letting you know uh, different features. We're not going to cover the rubrics today, uh, but that is something we'll explore for the future. So you must put a title for your assignment, otherwise you will not be able to post it. As you can see, my assignment button is grayed out, and that's because I do not have a title. That's Google's way of telling you, hold up. Slow down, make sure you add a title. So, you want to title it. And as you can see now, that triggered my assign button to uh, shade in. So, you want to now add your instructions. Um, you can be as detailed as possible. Uh, we're just going to leave the instructions blank for now. And this is how you add something that you have already created in your drive. So you want to click add then google drive now again your most recent documents will appear here you can search here in the search bar or you can go to your drive and search from there so we're going to provide a template for our students this word study template here now the default is going to be students can view file since we want every student to be able to have their own copy we want to click that drop down arrow here and select make a copy for each student. So what this does is Google AI will automatically create this word study Google Doc for each and every student in your Google Classroom. So it'll be uh, titled Kathleen Graham word study, Sandra Naranjo word study, and so on and so forth. Um, so that way you can uh, find it more easily. Okay. Now, if it's something you just want your students to view, like let's say you posted a resource, you can leave it at students can view file. If you want everybody to be on the same uh, file at one time, you know, some people do like that because they might be working on something collaboratively as an entire class, then you would select student can edit file. But we've noticed that teachers for the most part like to have something for each student. For each student. And since that's not the default, anytime you add a new thing from your Google Drive, Hmm, slowing down. Here we go. You want to make sure to always uh, click that drop down and select make a copy for each student. So as you can see, the default is students can view, but I want them to make a copy. Okay. Now, let's say I want them to also consult an online dictionary. I can add that as well as a link. So if I want them to use dictionary.com, I can add that as well. This is where I can tell them to use it as a reference. Remind them not to copy and paste. You know, some students might want to do that. Now, just like with the question here on the right hand side, I get to decide which classes get this assignment and which students. 
uh, we know some of our students may be in RSP, um, so we may want to decrease the amount of uh, vocabulary words they have to do depending on their IEP. So this is where you can differentiate for that. Maybe you can create another assignment that tells them which words they should focus on. And again, here is your point value. Maybe I want to make this 10 points. And I can assign a due date. And I can add it to a topic here. I do not have ELA, or I, can, I don't have vocabulary, so I can create a topic. And then when I'm ready, I would click Assign. Now, uh, the question did come up. Oh, no, I needed to add another document, and it's not letting me make a copy for each student. We don't know why Google hasn't updated it yet, but once I've assigned it, I can make edits. However, if I wanted to add another document from the Google Drive, since this is a, an assignment we've already created, it's not going to let you to select uh, students can make a copy, as you can see. So if I needed to add this with a make a copy for each student, I would have to delete the assignment and start over. We know this is a flaw. So just as we talked about earlier, you may want to click this little question mark to request a feature and then describe your idea to allow that drop down, make a copy for each student appear when you edit an assignment. So you want to make sure you select, you've added each attachment that you need to attach. If you need to put each student will get a copy. Otherwise, if you go back and edit, that option will no longer appear. Would you like to add anything, Kathleen? Or are we good? Uh, no, I'm just, um, I'm just. Kathleen, the questions? Yeah, I'm trying to answer some of the questions. A lot of you are asking about Go Math and Journey. So I guess we have a lot of elementary people in the classroom. This also pertains to StudySync. If anyone, if you get the link from that resource, you can just put it in. We're actually going to show you how you can add materials to the Google Classroom too. It's similar to what Sandra's doing now. Um, so you could just add a link. And to 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 that assignment and just post it there. Um, that's easy way. You can also just put a permanent link that's always for Study Sync or Newzella, so that it's just a link that it lives in your um, Google Classroom, and that's done under Materials. So you can just have a living one link that's always there that will take students directly to Go Math or Journeys or. Study Sync or Newzella or whatever other resources you are have constant that you want your students to have access to. Correct. So I'll show that right now. So if you want to create a material that will always live at the top of your Google Classwork um, area here, you want to click Create and you want to click Material. Now, again, you want to make sure to title it. So I heard Kathleen mention Newzella. I would click add, click link. And I can post it. And as you can see, these up here, we've left those as materials. You see this little icon right here? So these are unsorted assignments, but anything with this little icon, it looks like a book or a page with a bookmark. Those will be materials that will live at the top unless you added them to a topic. So if you want to link to Think Central here, you can as well, although we recommend that you always go through Clever. So you might want to add a link to Clever. So again, we would go create material. Add, then link. And the shortened link is clever.myousd. Dot org, click add link. And here we might want to add to students that this is how they can add access Think Central, Study Sync, and any other resources that you have added added yourself. Uh, Next Gen Math for first through eighth grade teachers. And anything else you customize in Clever. So this can be a reminder for them to go via Clever to access those resources. So as you can see, um, that link has that same little icon. 
So it's showing that it's a material. So that is how you can link a journeys assignment or a go math assignment or a study sync assignment as well. So that would be create assignment, add, then pull that link directly from journeys, a go math or study sync, and then just paste that link here. So you can also reuse an assignment. So uh, for those of you who teach multiple classes or you have a past Google classroom and you want to reuse an assignment from there, you want to click that create button. And then just like with a stream, you want to click reuse post. So here at the top, it's telling you what classroom I'm currently pulling the post from. If this is not where that post lives. You want to click that back arrow and go back and select the classroom. Hopefully I remember where it's at. And then select the assignment from there. If I want to create new copies of the attachment, click that, click reuse. Once Google works their magic, it'll pop up. There it is. So here I can then make any edits as necessary. I can add any instructions, maybe give a different title, add any other resources here, determine the point value and decide which classes get it, which students get it, select due date and a topic. And when you're ready, you can click assign. So what's great is that if you've been using Google Classroom, you have all your previous posts that you can reuse and edit as necessary to meet the needs of your current classroom. Uh, same if- Sandra, I have a quick question. Oh, go ahead. When you say 15 points, does it give it a scale from A to, to F? No. No, it's just however many points uh, you assign it. So it, it would do it by percentage. It doesn't have a scale. Got it, okay. However, uh, you. Um, if you, you can connect uh, your Google Classroom, let me rephrase that, not connect. You can go into ARIES and tell ARIES to pick up the grades from Google Classroom. And then since uh, for elementary, at least, it has the, the scale 90 yeah. to 100 yeah. and such, it'll yeah. pick it up that way. Got it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And yes, you can reuse posts from archived classes. This is why we've always said, don't delete your classes, uh, just archive them instead, because if you delete them, you will not be able to pull posts from those deleted classrooms to reuse. You can only pull from archived or live classrooms. Hello? No, you you were breaking up, but you're good now. Oh, okay. It could be me. <laughs> I'll repeat it anyways. So I uh, we recommend archiving and not deleting classrooms because if you delete a classroom, you cannot reuse a post uh, from a deleted classroom, only from archived and current live classrooms. All right, I think we've covered assignments. Kathleen, what do you think? I think so. And, uh, there were a few questions about assignments. Um, Maria Aceves, you said that you were able to select, make a copy for each student for the two documents, but on the third one, the option wasn't available. Can you unmute yourself so we can ask you a few questions? Are you still here, Maria? Well, maybe she's not here. If you add that, uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, so in your in that assignment, were you adding them one at a time, or did you save as a draft and then go to edit? I I did it exactly. I even uh, created the document. I recreated it and on Google Forms and. It was a document where they're supposed to write on it. So, uh, but every time I would attach it, I tried attaching it. I tried link, writing, inserting the link. I tried everything and it would only give me the option of those two options. So my question is though, did you, uh, had you saved the assignment as a, a draft or are you editing the draft or were you doing it all at the same time? Because if you go, if you save it or post it and then go back in, it, won't let you add you add another document it won't let you add make a copy for some unknown reason i, I saved it and then i in I then you try to add a third document so if yeah. you save it and then try to go back in and add a third document you will not have that option this is a been a known glitch or a known issue with google for we don't know how long and it is very frustrating uh you Correct. are not alone so we would suggest um going to that feedback area 
and where Sandra is on the screen and re report an issue or request a feature. Um, I will say this, since there are more teachers probably using Google Classroom than Google ever expected <laughs> during this time, um, they're going to get a lot of feedback from teachers, which is great because it's, this is going to help improve the tool. Okay, so I shouldn't stay with then. No, just make sure you have all the documents ready that you want to upload to the assignment and add them all at once. So if, if it's something you want to have every student have a copy. Now, if you have an assignment that if you have an assignment that um, you've put all your docs that you want to save it because you want to add some links later to some websites or a video, you can still do that because you don't give every student a copy on that. But for adding things from your drive, you want to add those all at the same time. OK, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, just just have everything ready at the first time around. But again, um, just you suggest that you click this little question mark here and request a feature and just let them know that you want that ability to edit assignments, uh, to have the make a copy for each student feature available and you want and you add another um, attachment. They, they're very receptive. Thank you so much. Okay, so you're very welcome. So I recall I wrote on my notes here, invite guardians. So um, on the people tab, you will see all of your students. Uh, next to the student's name, you would invite, click invite guardian, and that's where you would type the parent's email, okay? So the parents would then get an email letting them know you've invited them as a guardian and that uh, they can select whether they want a daily summary or a weekly summary. Okay, can you guys see this where it says classroom email summaries for, for guardians? Yes, Sandra, I can see it. Excellent. Uh, so here it tells you right here what parents can see. So they can choose the frequency, as I said earlier, they can choose to get a summary every day or once a week. Um, it'll show missing work. So work that's late, any work that is upcoming that is due soon and class activity. Okay. So we're going to show you what it looks like here because I know they have a sample. So here's a sample of a guardian summary. So as you can see, it'll say, this is a, a specifically a weekly one, not a daily one for this student, Felix. So here it shows the missing work that Felix had as, long, as well as the date that the original assignment was due. It shows what is due soon and the activity from the previous week. So it also shows when you as a teacher posted these things. So it appears that um, this student is from in multiple classrooms. So as you can see, it shows the title of the Google Classroom as well as the teacher. So for students that are in multiple Google Classrooms, such as secondary students or elementary students who are in team teaching situations, this is what their classroom guardian summary would look like for the parents. So for elementary who, do, who don't team teach, it'll just be one continuous uh, message based on only that one Google Classroom. So again, they don't get access into the Google Classroom themselves. They only get to see this. Uh, for those of you who are uh, TKK1, maybe even second grade teachers, uh, you can ask the parents to use their students, stu, mylusd.org uh, email and password to log into the Google Classroom if you're just using it to communicate with parents that way. Kathleen, what do you think about that? I think it's it should be only if they're communicating with parents that way, only because of the whole privacy thing. Because once you log in as your child, you can see everybody on there. That is correct. That is correct. All right, any other questions come up, Kathleen? I had just written assignment and guardians. No, there were some other questions um, about using audio, but I think we could probably address that at the end because someone can clarify. And also someone wants to know if they have separate Google Classrooms, can you combine them? So if you want all of your students in your Google Classroom, I know that as far as teachers go, you can add a maximum of 20 teachers. So in our people tab here, let's say you want to co-teach. I know there's something that came up uh, that one of the high schools asked, they wanted to uh, combine to help each other out and from the teacher perspective. So as you can see here, we have three teachers. You can invite more teachers with this little person button here and you can have a maximum of 20 teachers into one in one classroom. So if you want 
Um, students, Kathleen, I'm not sure what the maximum number of students is. For some reason, I want to say 100. Yes, I believe it's 100 students and um, 20 teachers. Leslie, you just responded. It's, it is better to have separate classrooms, but one of our secondary teachers wanted to hold a discussion, but be able to respond um, one to everybody at the same time. So that if someone from period one is asking a question, then period two would hear, hear the same, have the same response. So I don't think that uh, the best way to do that would be through Google Classroom. You might want to do what we're doing here. Because you can, have, you can have up to 250 people in a video call on a Google Hangout. So if you do want to have a classroom discussion, um, that is something to, to think about. Uh, my daughter is in the other room in her virtual school. They are using um, video as well for each period. They check in and they have a discussion about each period. They're not having a whole school thing, but um, that is that is what her school is doing. So you all have the option to do what we're doing right now with your students. Your students cannot create them. You have to create them and you would invite your students to them in a Google Classroom. And if that is something you're interested in doing, we will set up a webinar on that as well.